and the honorable members of the court. My name is Gordon Ogola, and mm -hmm. I'm representing the uh, sixth respondent, that is Irene Masit. I'll, I'll rush through the, my submissions because I would want to give more time to my brothers. Uh, I have been sent here by the sixth respondent to tell the court and the whole world that she's not coming here as a second tire petitioner. She's not coming here as a surrogate of anybody, but she's coming here as a demonstration of her undertaking to protect, uphold, and defend the integrity of the Constitution. Indeed, while taking oath of office, she undertook to carry out her duties in compliance with the Constitution. In that regard, the sixth respondent was live to the fact that in conducting the general elections, they had to be guided by the provisions of not only Article 81, 86, and 138, but also Article 10 of the Constitution. My Lord, she, the sixth respondent submits that the manner in which the election process was managed by the fourth respondent up to and including the tallying verification and the declaration of the results flies in the face of the provisions of the articles that have cited. As will be seen in the affidavit of Irene Masit and uh, corroborated with the affidavits of the other form commissioners, the chairperson excluded the majority of the commissioners from the tallying and the verification process. In fact, if you go through the affidavits, you will note that the only duty that they were assigned or that they undertook as regards verification and tallying was when they were summoned by the chairperson to be given the results in the office. My Lord, and the other thing that they only did is after he told them this is the results I'm going to read was to give them the form 34C. They did not take part in the tabulation of what resulted in form 34C. My Lord, the sixth respondent had a legitimate expectation uh, that as stipulated under 138, 3C, that the tallying and the verification ought to have been done by the commission and not by an individual commissioner in the person of Chebukati. In fact, the exclusion of these commissioners did not start at that point well in Gomas, but it started at the point when he, Mr. Chebukati, unilaterally reassigned them duties that they would take at the floor of bombers which were completely at variance with the duties that they were holding as the, in the subcommittees that were running at the, at the commission. A lot before the declaration of the results, the commissioners were expected to ascertain and satisfy themselves that whatever was being put into 34C was a true reflection of the contents of 34A and 34B, but they were never given them that opportunity. <coughs> My clients and the three commissioners have confirmed that they were not involved in the process at all that gave birth to 34C. Lord, even during the declaration of the results done by the four commissioners, Evidence that can be found in the affidavits shows that the only things they were given were handwritten pieces of paper with results in them. Those documents that they were given and which they were reading out to the public are not part of any accountable documents that can even be brought to this honorable court. Secondly, at the time of the declaration, my lord, you will note that the 20, there were two, there were 27 commit constituencies whose results had not been verified. Even though the chairperson claims that they could not announce or declare the results of those 24, 7, 27 constituencies because of the chaos that erupted, but they had an opportunity again when things were calmed down and they came back to, re to declare the results of the presidential uh, elect. Can it therefore, my lord, be said that the process that led to the declaration of the results were transparent? were accountable or were verifiable if indeed the declared results were accurate. My answer and the answer of the sixth respondent is in the negative. 
in respect to my client's position as to whether she accepts or agrees with the results that were announced, at paragraph 73 of her affidavit, she states that without verification of results from the 27 constituencies, I believe it was not possible to determine a winner in the hotly contested 2022 presidential elections, and to that extent, I cannot vouch for the veracity of the result declared by Wafula Chebukati on the 15th, for there was no transparency on his part towards the declaration of results and final figures and were not verified. I was kept in the dark by the chairperson with respect to tallying. That is her position. She cannot vouch for the result that declared William Ruto as the president-elect. Lord, lastly, the conduct of exclusion by the chairperson of the other commissioners from vital activities uh, of the commission was not uh, limited only to the events that happened at Bombers. I will just cite a few. One of them was the manner in which he assigned the commissioners' roles to play at the Bombers. That was a unilateral decision. Secondly, the unilateral deployment, transfer, and gazettement of returning officers nationwide. That can be found in the affidavits of uh, the sixth respondent at paragraph 16 and 17. Then the third one is the deliberate failure to facilitate the contract implementation committee to oversee the implementation of the ballot papers, contracts, and task of inspection of the printed ballots at the vendor's factory in Greece. That is a function that ought to have been done to ensure that there, there was due diligence of the ballot papers that were being printed. That one, again, they were not involved, and that did not take place. Lastly, the second, second last is the postponement of the elections in specific areas, including Mombasa, Kakamega, Kacheliba, Rongai, Pokot, South, among others. And lastly was the appointment and gazettement of the chairperson as the national returning officer. That, again, is not a decision that was taken by the commission uh, uh, unanimously. My Lord, in the end, it is apparent that in managing the affairs of the commission with regards to the elections, the fourth responded as the chairperson deliberately created a dysfunctional system to aid and abate his criminal and evil acts that would be interpreted to mean that he had intention to subvert the sovereign will of the people of Kenya. We beseech you, therefore, to find that nothing good can come out of a dysfunctional body. I'll therefore call my friend Jeremy to continue.